Pratosh. We now move on to the next speaker. Dr. Manjun is going to be advocating radio surgery as a primary modality for solitary small metastasis. Over to you, Manjun. Thank you for the introduction, sir. And so I'm going to speak on the role of radio surgery as an initial treatment for the solitary brain metastasis. So I am a micro neurosurgeon and radio surgeon both and use both the knives with equal love and passion for it. Whenever you disclose this unfortunate event to any patient, he goes into despair. And then the family members bombard you with multiple questions with a common denominator of the overall survival. And the other questions are the local control, distant control, quality of life, neurocognitive outcome, functional outcome, and the cost of the treatment, which are going to decide among the cafeteria choices. So before deciding among all these, we need to know why do these patients die? In 70% cases, the patients die because of the progression of the extracranial disease or progression of the primary. In 6%, they die because of the progression of the intracranial disease. And if you treat these patients upfront with the SRS, the morbidity, it's not the mortality. The morbidity of the treatment is 7%. And this might be an ego burner, but despite knowing all these scoring techniques, clinical data, we clinicians have been highly inaccurate in predicting the overall survival of an individual patient. So we need a new rational thinking, which we missed in the management of a CNS metastasis because the studies and the trials ignore the individual tumor biology. A CA prostate has nothing to do with a melanoma and a melanoma has nothing to do with the breast cancer because their radiobiology and sensitivity is entirely different. We have always been after the numbers, which was the crudest method of the tumor burden. The best method is to know the tumor volume. And we are far beyond the guidelines now because we are now talking about the multimodality treatment approach. So, Anything which is alien to the brain should be removed. We are no longer a bond in this kind of management. We are just a part of a multimodality treatment management, which is headed by a medical oncologist primarily these days. So after the publication of the famous special trial, which uh, Paritosh has recently mentioned, so there were many studies which tried to evaluate the role of WBRT alone or surgery alone or surgery with WBRT. And they could find that the surgery and WBRT median survival was same, but actually the overall survival was fairly better in radiotherapy group. And the extracranial metastasis was an important predictor of the mortality. So the trial failed to demonstrate that the addition of surgery to radiation therapy improved the outcome of patients with the single brain metastasis. This trial specifically mentioned about the single brain metastasis and they advocated a further meta-analysis. So last two decades were the decades of a whole brain radiation therapy. Uh, with the surgery, and they came with a significant complications in the form of neurocognitive decline, somnolence, alopecia. So what you had in the house was an ailing person who has gone silent and probably going to, everybody is waiting for him to die. So in the last two decades, especially in the 90s, there was a comparison between WBRT and SRS once they had already proven that WBRT was necessary. And in those studies, in the different permutations and combinations, they could find that no other treatment modality could give a better result than SRS. They were actually same in their outcome and the outcome parameters were same as in with a common denominator of the overall survival. In this head to head comparison of the 97 patients of the surgery and radio surgery, they could find that the survival at one year was same in both the arms, but the local recurrence was significantly high in only the surgical arm compared to the radio surgical arm. So on a conventional wisdom, SRS is required for the treatment of a small eloquent deep lesions, multiple lesions in short duration, minimally invasive technique. It's a day care surgery. If you want to, in this multimodality era, if you want to advocate some more treatment that can be started fast with a potential avoidance of WBRT and a good neurocognitive and a functional outcome. So from a patient's perspective or from an oncologist's perspective, what is the goal of any treatment? If I'm trying about surgery or SRS, it's not to make the tumor smaller. It's not to make the tumor absent, but it is to make tumor irrelevant. Even if it is lying inside the brain, if it is not showing any growth, it's an irrelevant one. So this is a, a non-small cell lung cancer in a 60 year old male and female, sorry. And she received the radiation treatment, gamma knife, then it showed a slight increase, then a second gamma knife. The patient lived after that for nine years. Why? Because the secondary was controlled with gamma knife in a lesion, in a location which is actually remote for a surgical approaches and the patient enjoyed a good quality of life. So this is a situation, something like a Galwan Valley. We've tried to remove the metastasis thinking that it would give you a very good, uh, uh, a very good uh, plane from the normal brain, but there are some tumor islands which are still there. And these are the reason 
which gives the chances of the local failure when you do not irradiate these tumors and treat primarily only with the surgery. This is the reason that there are multiple, nearly 41, which I could find on PubMed, 41 articles on a tumor bed radio surgery after a section of a cerebral metastasis so that the local failure can be improved. And this translates into a better quality of life and long-term survival. So among the radiation techniques, the radio surgery, which acts not only in the center, but also at the periphery and especially this zone, which is two to three millimeter marginating zone in the, uh, in the vicinity of the metastasis that gets a very effective irradiation with the radio surgery and provides a long-term uh, control on the local control and which translates into an overall, uh, in a better neurocognitive outcome and the functional independence. Compared to the other, other lesions, the brain metastasis is a blue-eyed boy for gamma knife and it is the most common indication worldwide for gamma knife radio surgery. Why? Because it's well marginated, usually round, non-infiltrative and small in size as we are, as the current topic of discussion is small solitary brain metastasis, you can give a very robust dose. For control and to avoid complication, you need a sharp dose fallout with a high precision, which you can achieve with radio surgery. You should include two to three millimeter adjoining area, and then you would spare the surrounding brain parenchyma this would give you, this would practically sterilize that area and prevent the local recurrences to the maximum. So the same study, which was uh, now told by uh, Dr. Paritosh Pandey in which they compared the surgery and WBRT versus SRS. Yes, we couldn't find any difference, but if you go with a critical analysis, the meta-analysis was not possible in this study because there was significant bias in the studies because of the histopathology, treatment regimes and timing and they could not give any evidence beyond grade three, uh, the level three evidence. So the overall survival, adverse events, progression-free survival and quality of life were actually same in the SRS versus that group which was having a surgery and a WBRT again. So SRS in a single day treatment is providing you the same kind of outcome versus a treatment which is, which is invasive and a lengthy treatment. A patient receiving multiple uh, radiation treatment going an invasive procedure and having the same kind of outcome. For what purpose? That's why the ISRS recent guidelines advocate for a single brain metastasis, SRS alone, because it is without compromising survival and it is having a lesser impact on the neurocognitive function with the SRS alone. Similar with the NCCN guidelines. So they tell surgery or SRS that depends on the location. And if it is a smaller one, just go with an SRS. And the benefit you do not need to think about the radiation sensitivity. That is not a concern with SRS. Local control, more than 95% and anywhere inside the brain. Definitely you are going to get distant failures. That is happening in only surgical arms also in which within a year, nearly 50% patient get distant failure. So if you give a 20 grade GKS, you are going to have an excellent local control and uh, patient's functional outcome. New metastasis would develop in 50% of the patient at distant sites, but additional GKRS is extremely effective in controlling these disease. And 12% of these patients die of the progression of neurological disorders. So if you are going to manage these patients who are bound to have a secondaries later on, how many times are you going to operate on them? You definitely need to add on the therapy to it. So what is surgery in this era is good for? large symptomatic tumor with the disputed diagnosis and edema. And what is WBRT actually good for? Just for carcinomatous meningitis, miliary dissemination, leptomeningeal spread, or as a salvage treatment. We Indians are obsessed with the mileage of the car. Definitely, stereotactic radio surgery is the most cost-effective treatment, and it has been repeatedly proven in the literature for any kind of a brain metastasis. With the evolving fractionation schemes, with the different multimodality treatment, we can provide the same kind of care in single session, stage session, and the hypofractionation regimes. I would like to have a word about the pre-op SRS one day before surgery, even if you want to go for a surgery. It would sterilize that area and significantly reduce the chances of the leptomeningeal dissemination and the symptomatic brain necrosis. So the patient's overall outcome is going to get better with it. Similarly, this is not the topic today, but two-stage radio surgery is now giving equal results than surgery, even for the large symptomatic lesions. SRS, a single day treatment, and then you can add on the immunotherapy. I would especially talk about the abscopal effect. So when you irradiate something with such a high dose, you practically kill the tumor and release those antigens inside the circulation. The cell mediated immunity act over it and that cell mediated immunity act over the other tumors, other metastasis elsewhere in the body. So you are treating one lesion inside the brain, but it is having a positive impact elsewhere in the body. 
that's one thing which you cannot achieve with any other treatment modality especially with the surgery so the new insights in the disease management is that the metastasis are different disease and individual tumor biology dictates the response the survival is based not on radio surgeon's response or neurosurgeon's response it's on the medical oncology care because you need to control the primary the number of brain tumors is irrelevant in the today's era it's the volume we should watch to maintain the cognition function for an independent life contraindications definitely when there is a diagnosis in doubt the disease is not behaving in the way you are thinking progressive neurological deterioration edema non responsive to steroids and an unknown primary and relative is an unrealistic expectations which is a problem with the googling patients one more thing which i wanted to tell about uh, giving a radiation is that it disrupts the blood brain barrier so this tumor received a radio surgery and you can see a central hypo intensity which is the contrast leak when you disrupt the blood brain barrier your adjuvant treatment approach becomes better and in those cases the targeted therapy reaches the tumor uh, the metastasis and it, that helps in the overall management of the disease so to conclude gkr is in surgery are same for overall survival and distant failure there is no difference if you use it either of them as an initial treatment gkr is is much better than surgery for neurocognitive outcome functional independence quality of life and distant failure and none of these to dictate the longevity of the patient that is dictated by the primary so this is the primary and this is the metastasis what we are talking about is just a pellet which has gone inside the brain until this is controlled nothing is going to be controlled and if this pellet can be controlled in a similar way by surgery or srs then why to go for an additional insult surgical insult to the patient long live the knife but rationally thank you very much